The Cannabis Investor Spotlight Series is sponsored by Integrated CBD, an institutional-grade supplier of organically grown hemp and hemp-derived CBD. Integrated CBD's 10,000 acres of drip-irrigated farmland in Arizona allows for sustainable year-round growing. Combine that with their USDA organic certification and their 154,000-square-foot extraction facility, and Integrated CBD is able to deliver unmatched uniformity and consistency that scales with your phytocannabinoid needs. Integrated CBD then goes even further, providing complete transparency into their products by tracking and tracing their CBD from seed to lab to bottles through an exclusive partnership with Verified Organic, a blockchain solution that records and verifies each step of the organic production. To learn how Integrated CBD's vertically integrated, single-origin, fully transparent solution scales to meet your company's hemp and CBD needs, visit integrated-cbd.com. Mention that you heard it on this podcast and receive 5% off your first-year orders. Terms and conditions apply. That's integrated-cbd.com to receive 5% off all your first-year orders. Integrated CBD, the certified USDA organic, fully traceable, hemp-derived phytocannabinoid solution that delivers at institutional scale. Collectively, we help them through our network. So if we combine our network with another fund's network, uh, we cover an awful lot in the industry. As Jordan said, one call away. And so once we're involved with these companies, we can now facilitate joint ventures and partnerships and new customers across all these different people that we know. From MJ Bulls Media, it's the Raising Cannabis Capital Show. I'm Dan Humiston, and on today's show, what are the next big cannabis business and investment opportunities? Top cannabis investors share their 2020 investment strategies. Today in Raising Cannabis Capital, we are continuing this month's Cannabis Investor Spotlight Series with Scott Berman and Jordan Tritt from Panther Opportunity Fund. Scott and Jordan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. Well, Panther primarily focuses on early stage equity investments within the legal ancillary cannabis industry, but you've also done some investment in plant touching companies. It's a pretty broad scope, so maybe we can start off by talking about what type of companies you look for, or what are some of the characteristics that you look for in companies that you would invest in? Sure, Dan. Panther Opportunity Fund is a three-year-old fund, the second fund for both of our managing principals. Ramey and David, both prior to cannabis, had long careers in business. Ramey, an entrepreneurial physician who started a company and took it public in the late 90s. David comes from a more traditional venture capital background, having run alternative investments for a family office out of Chicago and also run an early stage tech fund. Both Ramey and David's background lends well to ancillary investment opportunities, primarily software and technology. So that's the origin of where we got into the space. And then naturally, as we've been involved since 2014, you get to a point where you have to start evolving a little bit. And that's the reason why in this fund, which is, again, our second fund, we've decided to continue to have an ancillary focus, but also in particular situations, choose highly curated plant-touching deals. We also like to look for companies that have over a million in annual revenue and that have established management team that have had prior exits and have established some sort of market share in the particular vertical that they're in. We're not looking for super early stage. We like to see companies that have some traction And then we help them grow with our capital. I think that's really important, especially in this market. Before we jump ahead, I noticed that you also provide, in some cases, bridge debt, which we haven't seen a lot of debt offered. Can you tell us a little bit about that program? When we started out, given the pretty strict nature in terms of our investment thesis and the companies that we're looking for, we did feel it was important to go out and offer to companies combinations of both debt and equity. As a funding partner, we can be creative and bring both debt and equity. It just makes us a better solution. I also believe that in the future, debt deals will become more popular. There are certain things that may trigger this, such as the banking bill. I believe that after that happens, a lot more companies will seek debt financing instead of equity. And when we first started this fund in the early days, the angel investors are 
have been the, the primary way that these companies are being funded. But that is definitely going to change in the near future. In the prior answer, we were talking about the investment into these still early round, even though they're million dollar plus in revenue, they're still early round. But what I notice a lot in the cannabis industry is when these companies get the injection of cash, it's like they're on hyper growth. They just leapfrog all their peers. And you're seeing these the next round, just great multiples. I saw that on your deck where you made an investment in a company and within a little over a year, they went public and your investment was like three times greater. And are you noticing that, or is that pretty common with, within this industry? It, it really comes part and parcel with the type of opportunities we're looking for. We're looking for management teams that had prior exits. We're getting involved at a point where they've taken it to a certain extent, and they realize that it's not just the capital, because while we do have capital, there's lots of groups that have capital. So it's really the combination of the operators themselves the inflection point that we're getting involved in and the combination of us giving them capital so they can go and invest in their business as well as just being a founding board for them. And so we're really particular about the types of companies that we get involved in the stage. And that partnership is really key. And at the end of the day, like you said, Dan, that ends up leading to hyper growth uh, relative to some of the competition. Yeah, I think also we're seeing the, the whole market expand at such a rapid pace uh, one example is we're invested in a company that sells testing kits to labs. They're doing really well, and there's more labs opening in more states all the time. Testing is becoming a big business. So as each state uh, gives out licenses and approves legislation, more of the companies that we're invested in are expanding their footprint across the country. So the capital that we're providing is providing uh, salespeople and marketing and just new territories, which is enabling them to accelerate their growth. I want to take a quick break to thank you for listening to today's show. As the leading cannabis podcast network, we're constantly adding new cannabis podcasts to support our industry's growth. And that's why we're so excited to announce our newest podcast, The Cannabis Breakout. The show is about the thousands of Americans who remain in prison for violating cannabis laws that have long since been overturned. The Cannabis Breakout gives cannabis political prisoners a voice. If you're a former cannabis prisoner or have a loved one who is a cannabis prisoner, we want to share your story. Please go to mjbulls.com and sign up to be a guest. I want to jump ahead. You mentioned David's involvement in the industry, and I know you're all active in the industry, but I think, you know, as this industry continues to evolve, it's becoming harder and harder for the casual investor to really find good opportunities because it's it started to turn into sort of an insider's game. You will probably agree with me that you have a big advantage having people within the industry. You know who the players are. You know who the pretenders are. Give us an idea of what kind of an advantage that gives you when it comes to making investments. You know, the number one thing when we make an investment is the team. A lot of times that's a harder piece of the puzzle to really figure out. But given that we are in a relatively small industry, we're only one call away getting some pretty good insider information on any operators. There's no question that the key to, to doing well as a fund is minimizing the number of mistakes or what we call mortality rate that end up going to zero. Having the relationships that we have and being able to get a good inside track on management um, as well as also just having been in the industry, we, we tend to track companies for a couple of years before we end up investing in them. Yeah. And I think also after we invest, we often pool our money together with other funds and other friends where we go into deals together and then collectively we help them through our network. So if we combine our network with another fund's network, uh, we cover an awful lot in the industry. As Jordan said, one call away. And so once we're involved with these companies, we can now facilitate joint ventures and partnerships and new customers across all of these different people that we know. So it, it definitely is a very big point and it helps us a lot. Huge benefit to your investors. And more importantly, it's huge benefit for your portfolio companies because you have all these contacts and you have this 50,000 foot vantage point where you can see opportunities that they may not otherwise notice. I suspect that's a real benefit. Yes. If a company is interested in talking to you about 
investing in their company. Or if an investor wants to get some more information about maybe having you manage their cannabis portfolio, what should they do? We're always open for inbound solicitations, conversations. We're active at the shows. Yeah, I think the trade shows are really important in this industry. There's a lot of times that we gather at these shows and have informal meetings. So my suggestion always is to show up as many things as you can. Seek us out. We're very open. We love to uh, meet new people and discover new ideas and new investors. So feel free to, to shoot us a note. Well, we've been speaking with Scott and Jordan from Panther Opportunity Funds, and we will have all their contact information on the MJ Bulls website. So if you don't make it to a trade show, we'll, you can check out our website and get their email address and go from there. Scott, Jordan, thanks again for being on the show. It's good to catch up with you. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Thanks for everything you're doing for the end. We appreciate it. Well, I'm having a great time. Thanks again. Today's show was made possible by the generous support of our sponsors, like Helix TCS, the leading provider of critical infrastructure services to the legal cannabis industry. Recently, Helix's president of data services and former New York Stock Exchange executive Garvis Toller was a guest on the show to discuss cannabis capital markets and how savvy businesses and investors are capitalizing on the recent downturn. Tune into episode 152 to learn more. Today's podcast was produced by MJ Bulls Media, the industry's premier cannabis podcast network, with original music produced in part by Jamie Humiston. I'm Dan Humiston, and you've been listening to the Raising Cannabis Capital Podcast.